On June 15, 1904, a massive fire consumed the paddle steamer General Slocum as it sailed along New York City's East River, killing more than 1,000 people. Many of the victims were women and children who had been part of a church group's annual picnic. It remained New York City's deadliest disaster for nearly a century. That is, until the terrorist attacks on September 11, 2001. Even to this day, it remains the city's worst maritime disaster. And yet, it's a disaster that is often overlooked, perhaps because it lacks the allure and romance of other shipwrecks. The General Slocum, after all, was not a luxurious ocean liner filled with dignitaries and tycoons. Rather, she was an aging pleasure cruiser in disrepair, her victims, mostly German immigrants, simply looking forward to a church picnic. As to why the disaster is often overshadowed, one survivor of the General Slocum later said, the Titanic had a great many famous people on it. This was just a family picnic. Perhaps what is just as chilling as the disaster itself is the gross negligence leading up to the events of that day. How could one small fire grow into such a deadly inferno? Why did the life preservers on the General Slocum actually contribute to a higher death toll? Today, we explore the story behind the General Slocum and the German immigrant community that was forever changed on that fateful day. The General Slocum was named after one of the youngest major generals in the American Civil War, Henry Warner Slocum. By age 35, Slocum had helped lead the Union Army to victory at Gettysburg and would later go on to serve three terms in Congress. In other words, the name Slocum became synonymous with respect, honor, and glory. And so it was a name, the owners thought, that would lend an air of respect and dignity to their new ship. When she was launched in 1891, the 264-foot-long paddle steamer was an impressive sight. She had a gross tonnage of just under 1,300 and featured three watertight compartments, a relatively new safety feature for this type of ship. Her wooden hull was painted a brilliant white, and her yellow funnels towered high on the upper deck which was also known as the Hurricane Deck. The Slocum was a visually striking ship that stood out against the other ships in the harbor. On each side of the Slocum were two massive paddle wheels, each of them 9 feet wide and 31 feet in diameter. Her two boilers could get her up to speeds of around 15 knots. Inside, she had two large saloons on the middle and lower decks, where natural light and fresh air poured in through the numerous windows. Passengers could take in views of the cityscape from the comfort of velvet upholstered wicker chairs. From May to October, travelers could pay 50 cents for the five hour round trip from Manhattan to Rockaway to enjoy seaside activities. The General Slocum certainly lived up to her dignified name, but only for a brief period. Just four months after her launch, she ran aground off New York's Rockaway Point and had to be towed to freedom. This was just the beginning of a series of groundings and serious collisions over the next several years. By 1904, the General Slocum was no longer the star of the East River. Faster and more luxurious steamboats were attracting upper-class clientele, but the Slocum remained just as busy as ever, chartering church groups and other social organizations for a day of seaside fun. She and her sister ship, the Grand Republic, still had the distinct honor of being the largest excursion steamboats coming out of New York and standing on her decks gave passengers invigorating views of the shoreline as she steamed down the river. However, since the Slocum had essentially become a water taxi for the lower class, her owner, the Knickerbocker Steamboat Company, no longer made her maintenance a priority. The life jackets, which had been stored on the upper deck exposed to the elements for 13 years, had rotted. The fire hoses were cracked and rotted from having never been replaced, and the lifeboats were wired to the deck in such a way that they were inaccessible in an emergency. To make matters worse, her crew had never practiced a fire drill. Years of negligence and greed were about to come to a head, and the lives of more than 1,300 passengers and their families were about to be forever changed with a single spark. On Wednesday, June 15, 1904, Hundreds of parishioners of St. Mark's German Lutheran Church lined the Third Street dock under clear blue skies. 
The majority of passengers that day were Sunday school teachers, mothers, and their children. For $350, the church had booked the Slocum to carry the group up the East River to Long Island for their 17th annual summer picnic. They departed around 9.30 that morning and started up the East River. About 30 minutes later, as the ship passed through a section of the river called Hellgate, a fire started in the lamp room in the forward part of the ship. It's presumed a discarded match or cigarette started the fire, but whatever it was, it certainly would not have taken much to ignite the room, which was littered with straw and oil rags. On the upper deck, Pastor George Hawes was enjoying the cruise with his wife and daughter when he recalls the scene that followed. The band was playing, and the women and the children were crowded around the musicians listening to the piece. Then came the cry of fire and the awful scene. In three minutes, it could not have been more, all three decks were ablaze. In what seemed like the blink of an eye, the fire consumed the General Slocum. Flames shot up through the upper deck as it collapsed, causing passengers to fall down into the burning ship. Masses of panicked passengers ran to the back of the ship to escape the flames, trampling women and children. Others scrambled to find life jackets, only to find that they had rotted and practically fell apart in their hands. The life jackets that didn't fall apart were actually more dangerous. The cork inside them had turned to dust, causing them to absorb water like a sponge. Children who were tossed into the water wearing them would often sink and drown from the weight of them. Survivor John Kircher recalls how his wife put a life preserver on their daughter and threw her overboard, assuming she would stay afloat. But the child never appeared, Kircher said. She had sunk as though a stone were tied to her. Even the few people who knew how to swim struggled on the water, as they were often dragged down by their heavy wool clothing, or by panicked passengers clamoring to hold on to anything they could grab. To complicate matters, the Slocum's captain, William Van Shake, did not immediately beach the ship on a nearby shore. Instead, he continued up the river for at least two more minutes as the winds continued to feed and push the flames throughout the length of the ship. Fire engines waiting on the shore could do nothing but watch as the General Slocum turned into a ball of fire, as passengers jumped into the river, only to drown. When the Slocum finally beached and sank off North Brother Island, the scene was catastrophic. Doctors and nurses from a nearby hospital ran out to assist passengers in the water, but quickly realized they were bringing more bodies ashore than survivors. In the end, out of the estimated 1,342 souls on board, more than 1,000 of them died. Entire families, who just 20 minutes before had been looking forward to a church picnic, were now gone. Devastated husbands, who had been at work at the time of the disaster, were now searching morgue after morgue, trying to find their wives and children. In Manhattan's Lower East Side, the German immigrant neighborhood known as Little Germany would never recover. A large number of its core population died on the General Slocum, and over the next several years, its population continued to dwindle as the few remaining residents moved to the Upper East Side neighborhood of Yorkville. The church that chartered the General Slocum would suffer a similar fate, with most of its congregation dead, and with the remaining parishioners moving away, it finally merged with the Zion Church in New Yorkville in 1946. Despair over the disaster turned to anger as families of the victims wanted answers as to how something like this could have happened. Many people placed the blame squarely on Captain Van Shake for not beaching the ship immediately. Others said the ship's owner, the Knickerbocker Steamboat Company, was at fault for not keeping up on the Slocum's maintenance. Throughout the inquest and trial, scores of witnesses testified in great detail about the rotting life jackets that fell apart in their hands, and the lifeboats that were sealed to the railing, preventing escape. On January 27, 1906, the jury found Captain Van Shake guilty of criminal negligence and misconduct. The nearly 70-year-old captain, who, up until the Slocum disaster, had had a respectable 30-plus year career without a single loss of life, was sentenced to 10 years of hard labor in New York's Sing Sing prison. His initial request to be pardoned was denied by President Teddy Roosevelt, but he was finally pardoned in 1912 by President Taft. Meanwhile, Despite a mountain of evidence that the ship was not safe, the company only received a nominal fine and was essentially acquitted of any wrongdoing. 
In the end, Captain Van Shake was the only person to serve prison time for the accident. For the Knickerbocker Steamboat Company, time was money. Just days after the Slocum disaster, her sister ship, the Grand Republic, resumed service. And, not surprisingly, it was discovered later that same summer that she too had rotten life preservers. As for the General Slocum, what was left of her was salvaged and converted into a 625-ton barge, which later sank in a storm in 1911. To this day, the General Slocum disaster is a stark reminder of what happens when greed and classism collide. The Knickerbocker Steamboat Company failed to maintain a ship that primarily served the lower class, instead choosing to pocket the profits for their own gain. The resulting disaster killed hundreds of people, wiped out entire families, and left a scar on New York's German community.